Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Joe, and I'm so glad you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. And today we're going to look into we reap what we sow. What goes around comes around. And in the book of Galatians, chapter 6, it tells us that we reap what we sow. And so we're going to look at Paul, who was Saul before he became Paul, to see an example of that. So if you brought your Bibles today, brothers and sisters, please turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 9. And we'll read verse 3. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground, and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And that's Jesus, brothers and sisters, talking to Saul from the sky. And he falls and he trembles. And you know the story. When he gets up, he's blind. And the people that are with him lead him to a house in Damascus. And we'll start reading at verse 10. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight. And inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. So brothers and sisters, you see the Lord is going to use Paul in a mighty way. He's going to preach to the Jews until they don't want to hear him anymore. And they're all fearful of him because they all know that, wait a minute, he was persecuting Jesus and now he wants to preach Jesus is the Christ. But see, God revealed himself to him in the sky, literally. You see, Saul was a Pharisee and a son of a Pharisee. And he knew all about the old text. And he knew how to follow God religiously. But he thought Jesus was an imposter. An imposter is someone who makes people believe that they're someone they're not. For financial gain, usually. But for some kind of gain. But our Lord and Savior, I am who I am, came to die on a cross for you and me, brothers and sisters. And so, or once Paul recognizes who he really is, and he, what, blinds him. I mean, he, he knows, I gotta change. I gotta follow Jesus. I gotta work for Jesus. And I got to bring others to salvation. So he does. And then he goes to the Gentiles and he brings many, many people to Christ. It's amazing, but he has to suffer. So turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and we'll read verse 24 and 25. Now Paul is talking in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and he's describing to the people that he had to suffer much. He was in prison, he says, more than any of the other apostles. And reading from verse 24, it reads, From the Jews five times I received forty stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. 
Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. So you see, brothers and sisters, he was whipped five times, three times beaten with rods, in prison more than any of them, was stoned, left for death, and in ships that wrecked and he was in the sea. Can you imagine swimming in the sea 24 hours without a boat, without a raft? But God saved him, but it was much suffering. And that's just a little bit of what he went through. He went through more. But you got to understand, God is a just God. He was there present when Stephen was stoned to death. He held the, the soldiers' coats and jackets so they could stone him to death. And he was responsible for many, many Christians to be incarcerated in jail and killed. Yes. So even though he was a great servant of the Lord, the Lord does not leave him without any suffering. Brothers and sisters, Jesus came and suffered for your life and mine so we could live forever. Amazing grace, amazing love. So we should not expect not to reap what we sow. We need to be honest with ourselves and honest, more importantly, to God because we know that we're sinners and we know we've done a lot of bad things, a lot of things that he should have just taken us off the planet and sent us to hell, but he didn't and he doesn't because of that amazing grace and love he has for you and me. But when we have to go through a trial that is really a lot of suffering, he says to praise his name and we need to. And we should not be feeling sorry for ourselves because all of us can think back at times where we deserved everything we get. One thing I have discovered is we're always blessed with far more than what we deserve. I know I am. And we're chasing far less than what we deserve. I know I am. So brothers and sisters, be aware of that. And never get mad at God. Never get angry with God. Run to God, not from God, when you are being chased in or what goes around comes around. You reap what you sow, brothers and sisters. It tells us that, and you do. And Paul, who was Saul, who persecuted the Christians, had to pay a price. He had to suffer with Christ. The Word of God says we must suffer with Christ. But we'll never suffer like Christ did. And he didn't deserve it, brothers and sisters. Always remember that. So keep that upward call. And we know that Paul is with our Lord and Savior in the paradise of God to have life, eternal life. And you and I, brothers and sisters, want to do the same. Amen? Amen.